Jim Hogue, and the program is House at Pooh Corner. And today we have a Vermont visionary with us today, running for governor, Emily Payton from Putney. And her collaborator in this effort, campaign collaborator, who's John Root from Petersham, Massachusetts. And they are touring the state so that Emily's message can get out. And uh, um, we decided to do this program because there aren't very many Vermont visionaries out there running. And I wanted to hear a, uh, a vision for Vermont's future that was productive and on the human scale and all these wonderful things that are outside the paradigm. And Emily, for many, many years, has been definitely outside the paradigm. And many of her ideas are a positive vision for the state of Vermont. So I will turn the program over to Emily and John, and we'll see what happens. But you know what's very funny is, even though uh, I've been outside the paradigm, and incidentally, you've been there with me, and <laughs> Uh, lately, uh, I've been getting feedback that the, the blessed unrest, as we call it, the, the general unrest with the systems that we're working under is becoming so great that the desire for an alternative paradigm is moving much closer. So uh, the work that we've done in the past to introduce public banking, of course, resulted in a tiny step also. Uh, there was a lot of work at the State House um, to get some money into VITA. We have more work to do to reform our monetary system so we have uh, much uh, uh, an, an easier to those who need it the most. And the hemp, of course. Um, we've made big strides with that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more work to do, of course, uh, particularly in the judicial system. And I think there's a desire amongst the people now, an earnest desire to move our entire, entire penal system towards a restorative methodology. And of course, to stop sending people to Kentucky um, and stop the uh, criminalization of nonviolent offenses, for starters. Yeah, well, there are lots of issues. There are really uh, a host of, of issues that the two major parties, or the the Tweedledee and Tweedledum parties never really change. They never really talk about how we could create a genuinely nurturing economy. Mm -hmm. And the ways in which one can do that have both to do with money, uh, the fact that the money is scarce, it's always hard to come by, that's a major problem. And there are many things that we can do about that. And the other thing is the attitude that the government, the state, could take towards in, uh, local initiatives. Mm -hmm. If the government were focused on local initiatives, on uh, people getting together in the neighborhoods where they live, right. and talking about the things that they would like to see happen, with the possibility of funding it, major changes would come about. Well, exactly, a lot like what's happening in Bethel, with the revitalization projects, for example, their, uh, their pop-up university. That gives us an idea of how we can augment our educative system and perhaps put in a, a, a standard of, of accreditation for people who are getting their, their education in alternative ways. Um, John has been a mentor for me, as you have, uh, around monetary systems, and as we see cannabis uh, becoming legal and we're, we're beginning to grapple with that. Uh, what we can do, because we still have problems with the commercial banking empire not wanting to go there, mm -hmm. uh, we can envision a can of currency, if you will. But what I, what I hear and what I see that we need is a statewide system of making a standard so that small growers can bring their excess in, have it tested and standardized and possibly bought by a collective to, for resale. Mm -hmm. Like they do in Canada with the hemp. Yeah. Tell me, I, you, you can instruct me about how they do in Canada. Oh, well, they just have three grades 
of hemp for different purposes. I remember I did that in, because you. Yes, because we've been learning about it, but it's, about it. it's fun that, and, to learn. Uh, all I know is that the, the different grades have to do with the strength. You know, one grade is looking for strength, and another grade is looking for something else, and another grade might be medicinal. I don't really remember what the three grades are about, but they are a very strict standard. Yeah. And, and I remember I called somebody who was involved in that process mm -hmm. at the time. Well, uh, Canada, actually in Vermont, we have probably the most liberal hemp laws in this hemisphere in that Vermont wants to treat it like corn and wheat and they also want to get off the hook for any federal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I oppression of the crop. And we're still waiting for the farm bill to be passed that has a measure in there that would totally differentiate the hemp mm -hmm. from the, uh, the marijuana, which would be good. Mm -hmm. But in Canada, most of the hemp that's grown right now is for seed, for the food, food grade. And we're beginning to see, mm -hmm. only beginning to see uh, some of the fiber and people are wanting to put to use the, what we're using in building materials. You know that- The hempcrete. Yeah, myself mm -hmm. and my partner have a small business in building material. So, and also in Vermont, we're seeing that a lot of people want to know what to do with their stocks. Mm -hmm. And they're coming to us. Mm -hmm. And so, what we can do because the processing is extremely expensive mm -hmm. to get at this secondary material or even the fiber or to utilize the plant like we could is when we begin to tax and regulate the marijuana that some of that um, revenue go to either a, a state-owned or a cooperative uh, processing plant on the west side of the state which will be there ready for when uh, New York which has the acreage that we need to, to serve a plant uh, to, will be there to serve that and it will provide the raw materials for uh, numbers of jobs, mm -hmm. numbers of, of you know hard plastics. I, I hope the, the listeners have uh, educated and informed themselves about the bounty of, of renewable items and clean and green items that the agricultural hemp, uh, sometimes the canaf, uh, can offer us. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the interesting things about hemp that's important to know is that it's nitrogen fixing. So it helps the soil. Mm -hmm. It sequesters carbon. It doesn't require pesticides or herbicides because it grows pretty densely. It grows quickly. Mm -hmm. The number of uses that we could use hemp for is just amazing. Mm -hmm. and if you, uh, I, I remember the list went on for pages. So uh, Vermont used to have a really big paper industry. And right, right. hemp paper is really, really good. You can make all kinds of different paper out yeah. of uh, hemp fibers. And, and without you know, spending too much time on hemp, which we can, but you know, there are some myths out there about the hemp. Uh, it's, it does need a lot of fertilizer. It, it's cor so somewhat like uh, corn. So there are some myths out there and it can, have some diseases, and of course, you may be growing it for the CBDs, which is where the Vermont is going uh, because we have better soil. So when you're extracting CBDs and then you're reducing what are it, CBDs? Uh, the cannabidiols, Cannabis, the oil. Yeah, because the the THC remember is tetrahydrocannabidiol, oh, yeah. and cannabidiol is is the CBDs. And what the CBDs are, and there's a range of CBDA, there's all these different sort of uh, terpenes, there's these different uh, sub uh, parts of this, the, the chemical makeup of a plant that can be changed. And the THC, of course, is the stuff that gets you high, and it also uh, is, helps with pain. And uh, then there's the CBD, which is present also in a high THC uh, environment but it's, it's present in the hemp, that is, is really the workhorse of the healing that you know, reduces uh, not only anxiety, but um, inflammation, it can reduce cancerous growth, um, it, can, it, it, it helps the nerve endings communicate. So the um, endocannabinoid system is the system of the nerves communicating and we all have natural 
cannabinoids, but these are phytosynthesized, they're synthesized by plants. So, um, like, you know, I've made a drink of, out of fresh hemp leaves, actually juicing your own hemp or marijuana leaves, which won't get you high, is excellent, you know, like we do wheatgrass, it's just excellent for your health mm -hmm. and for your, your nervous system to, to uh, reduce your, any Alzheimer's or stuff. So uh, it's very, the hemp industry and the cannabis industry uh, can enormously support not only our health, the, the, the housing can help us meet our carbon sequestering goals because mm -hmm. it actually locks up carbon. It all actually is a healthier uh, environment because the, the um, toxins in the wall systems, the formaldehyde, the VOCs, that's what's contributing to the asthmas. Uh -huh. So our housing stock is really in poor shape because most houses only stand for you know, four, 75, 100 years. Of course, hempcrete is going to stand for hundreds of years. So as we need to repair our housing stock and we look to hempcrete to do so, we'll be also repairing our children's uh, breathing health mm -hmm. too. So it's a, uh, it's a vision that's enormously helpful, enormously productive, uh, and exciting that I share when I talk about um, mm -hmm. moving forward and with full support for the hemp and cannabis industry. And, <coughs> what, if you were governor, or when you're governor, um, what can the government of Vermont do to promote the hemp industry? Uh, well, it can do numbers of things. Uh, we've talked about a state bank and how important it is to protect uh, Vermont's money in a state bank uh, because right now it's unprotected in TD Bank North. It's an unsecured creditor over there and I cannot get Beth Pierce to see how risky it is because we're due for another crash and it's in TD Bank North which for two reasons uh, are uh, super problematic for Vermont. Number one, TD Bank North is the major investor in the tar sands which mm -hmm. is uh, the most environmentally destructive process to remove yeah. bitsmuth or oil and it's, it's really destroying indigenous lands up there and TD Bank is the major investor and we are keeping all our state money It's some like what is it we were running to have what is it 300 some million up there oh I don't remember I was I certainly knew at one point right right and and, and it's uh, the pass-through money it's the, exactly it's yeah. like they she's that's the cheapest place that she can find for mm -hmm. for us to do our checking as it were mm -hmm. and uh, so for that point it shouldn't be there and also because of in the, pat, in the last banking uh, failure when they were doing the experiments on Greece of bailing in, remember they went into people's bank accounts who and had Cyprus, a certain, yeah. to, to, to uh, mm -hmm. that recapitalize was. Recapitalize the banks. Yeah, recapital. We are totally unsecured in, in um, TD Bank right now. So well, it's. derivative exposure is exactly. what Gary Murphy and I right. were collaborating on when he died right. from the fall. So she was, she was uh, you know, she made the argument that we would lose our uh, AAA rating and that, that was a false argument. Also, yeah. that was given to her by the banking lobbyists. Yeah. So as governor, what I certainly would do is do a lot more public education so people feel comfortable about having, our, having a bank, banking license probably at VIDA so that we can make our money work more for us. We can make the loans through the banks. We'd be banking, backing the local loans mm -hmm. to, to do this. Certainly right. uh, advocating for the can of currency. So mm -hmm. we also, and uh, so I would be able to uh, expressly inject more means of exchanges and certainly do a lot of education and a lot of promotion because what I stand for, and I think a lot of people agree with me, is that we aren't a great country if we leave our people homeless. There's absolutely <laughs> no reason why we can't have tiny house communities or, 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 or buying some of the old houses to, there's no reason to have people without a safe place to put their heads, even if we just stop sending people to Kentucky, which is also another abuse of government. You mean prisoners? 
Yeah, I don't like to call them prisoners. I call them people. Oh, they're just <laughs> people. Okay. Yeah. You know, one thing that I, just for rounding out the concept of why we need a large bank to put Vermont money in, is that the balance sheet has to equal out. You can't have too many deposits. That's what happened with Cyprus. Mm -hmm. They had too many deposits and couldn't support the interest payments on the deposits because they didn't have enough loans. Mm. So Vermont has to have a bank that can make that balance work. If there are too many Vermont deposits in Northfield Savings Bank, then the Northfield Savings Bank can't make the interest payments mm -hmm. on those deposits. Which, of course, is very so low. You do have to have a large bank that has a lot of loans out there and collecting the interest on those loans right. so that the Vermont, so the income from the account is worth something. Right. So I, I think Beth Pierce is trying to put money in in local Vermont banks, but she can only do so much because, because of that balance of loans versus. And also her, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna speak to Beth Pierce's uh, because I want to move on to mm -hmm. uh, some of the things we were just talking with Jeff Fannel about, uh, about the... Um, Fannin. Fannin, sorry, uh, and who is working with the uh, National Education Association mm -hmm. and uh, what they're proposing for Vermont, which I get behind, is to eliminate property tax altogether and uh, uh, tag it into the income tax, which as as a matter of course, without getting too much into the weeds, people can, we can talk in smaller things because people's eyes glaze over, mm -hmm. how we can increase circulation of methods of exchange to move towards a reduction of taxation because uh, regardless of whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, the Democrats, of course, will tax higher and the Republicans will get further into debt. The, the economic oppression of taxation and debt-based monetary system are, are something we need to grapple with at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to do so not in, a, not in a revolutionary quick way. We need to do it deliberately with understanding mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that people don't feel like they're being you know, mm -hmm. shifted around or whatever. California seems to have taken the lead mm -hmm. in that, yeah. by the way. Uh, Los Angeles in particular is working on public money. There's one. They're one, getting close. Yeah, yeah, there's one town that's experimenting with the universal basic income. Of course, they're only doing a very uh, sample portion, and I think they're only doing $500. But there's places around the globe that now are understanding that participation in the economy with dignity mm -hmm. is an element of equality, and it will support our move towards sustainability enormously. And, mm -hmm. and towards, of course, happiness as a measure of success in society. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're having fun so on the, this, this, the whole, this cycle. Uh, the whole issue of scarce money is one of the things that uh, a governor can do a lot about. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, the legislature would have to approve of a state bank, but if the governor is behind it and advocating for it and dealing with all of the objections that the banking lobby brings up, then it's quite possible to say very directly there is no reason for our money to be issued by for-profit banks for profit. Mm -hmm. And if the state of Vermont were issuing the money, even if it's still as loans, but we're more or less aiming to uh, recoup the cost of administering the whole mm -hmm. thing. You could have quarter percent interest rates. You could have, um, uh, or you might, you might have really high interest rates for things that are uh, much more profitable, and that would that would enable us to just reduce the tax burden and reduce the tax burden. So if you go back to colonial times, there were no taxes except on whiskey. Yep. No taxes. Yep. It was mm -hmm. all funded by the loans that the legislature made to the businesses. So during colonial times, the business would both get a charter so that they had limited liability, and they would get the money that they needed to establish the mill or right, the right. what have you. Uh, what, what I have, when I, what, one asset I have as governor is I have 
uh, colleagues who are immensely uh, knowledgeable, and uh, Ellen Brown as well, who is leading the public banking movement. Uh, but I also want to bring in some other elements, because although we do know that the core issue of uh, the, the oppression of our times is th that all money is coming from the commercial banking mm -hmm. empire. Those aren't the only issues that I want to talk about today. Uh, Go for it. I yeah, and you and I can, yeah, right. we can talk, talk about, about monetary the money. policy. Yeah. yeah, and I'll say what he said, what he said. <laughs> 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 so um, I also want to talk about the need for a uh, truth and reconciliation and restitution movement uh, for First Nation peoples, people of color, and also women, and 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 also people who have experienced uh, crimes against them done by a violent government. So I want to. One of the things that I'm most eager to do in a position of governor is to initiate a series uh, of you know they would be in hotel meeting rooms where pe we come together, somewhat like what happened in South Africa, where Truth and Reconciliation Movement, we need that here. We need that for our healing, and we need that, uh, we need that to move forward from the harms that have been done historically, uh, and as we see the harms that are coming to yeah. the surface that have been done against women, so that we can move forward with a, a respect for one another and, and an understanding that each one of us are uh, directly connected to what I call source intelligence. Many other people will call it God and so forth, but that uh, I use the term source intelligence. So if you're hearing me talk about that, I'm talking about what other people term as, as God or the, the, uh, the invisible <laughs> uh, ethers where, where uh, the possibilities are, are, are occur from. Right, so as governor, you could initiate uh, political therapy sessions. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> We're, you know, we, I've run three times and you've run before, so you know how frustrating it is to have um, a beneficial vision for Vermont and be completely barred from competing fairly in debates. Uh, so e that Even when you're running for a, a party that's established. Exactly. Like Liberty Union. Well, yeah, and that also happened when I, you know, there's a, a co-opt, co-opting going on of our democracy by mm -hmm. the the uh, the leaderships in the party and the, mm -hmm. the debate hosts. The and powers the, that be. Yeah, and the Vermont Digger next week is having one in uh, Rutland mm -hmm. where they certainly have not invited me to participate. And people want the yeah. participation. Yeah, be careful of your idea of who the good guy is out there because there is a massive attempt from the power structure down to keep third party candidates right. uh, away right. from the process and it's it's getting worse right right and and and, and people you know the average person does, does not know how much work alternative leaders like me have done behind the scenes mm -hmm. uh, you know with lawsuits with uh, you know requests for new rules and you know, a lot of time uh, and it doesn't really uh, appear very uh, gubernatorial to be arrested and hauled off the stage uh, you know so I'm not going for that or to do something super flaky but to your point about the political therapy group it has been brutal in the past running mm -hmm. the, the 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 shaming that the press has attempted to do which I have I'm not feeling so shamed mm -hmm. anymore, but we're having fun with it. I mean, it's important to have fun while doing this so we have good memories. Right. So John and I are going around the state, and if you see a little mini school bus, if it runs for us and doesn't break down, <laughs> but it seems to be choosing where to stop and break down and then start up and go fine, it's a little rainbow-colored school bus, and inside are two seats, two benches that we can sit in, and we have a, a little sandwich board that we put out, kind of like Lucy in the Peanuts, uh, mm -hmm. in the Peanuts strip that says, uh, um, that the, says the, the, the candidate is in, mm -hmm. and it says, come on board for a political therapy group. <laughs> so we're having fun um, within the, this serious work. 
Right. So the, the thing about political therapy is that whenever you go into therapy, the issue is, can we get to the root cause? Can we get to the underlying cause of whatever the problem is? And it's usually something that happened in your childhood when you're in therapy. So what is the underlying problem in our politics? Why do things keep getting worse and worse and we get to choose between Tweedledee and Tweedledum when there's no real difference? Why is that? Where is the actual problem? So that's what political therapy would be, and that's well, what I believe Emily would be able to do as governor. Well, really uh, begin to address the issue of what is really underlyingly wrong in the way that politics is well, conducted. Well, may I, may I sort of amend that idea? Okay. Because uh, two minutes. Finally. Okay. So we know, people know in their guts what's wrong. They know something's wrong. And yes, you know, being able to see the systems that are wrong as a, as a matter of comparison. But also, sometimes you can heal without um, analyzing what is wrong by having an attention in your heart of what we call knowing what is in our hearts is possible. And that's part of the reaching out to the people in the different communities to uh, expand their thinking on what is possible to give them the go-ahead and the encouragement like Bethel the town of Bethel to move mm -hmm. forward and that's really what my intention is as a leader to to do and and to uh, encourage a balance of, of feminine concepts mm -hmm. that are now missing in our in our foundation okay. well we have to wind this up and I do want to remind people that my two Previous interviews with Ian Baldwin will be posted on YouTube probably in a f couple of hours. And you, it, they're also posted on the ORCA site. So uh, geoengineering with the history of geoengineering and the present st state of geoengineering is uh, uh, two half-hour programs going up. On this, Good. on this channel and on my channel, House at Pooh Corner with Jim Hogue, and uh, so you know, may I practice? Check that out. That, I, you have excellent interviews, and people should know that you're one of the leading interviewers of whistleblowers. And you, it's so important that we support those people who will tell us what is going wrong in government. And I try not to bother with people who are in the paradigm. <laughs> because but, they're already out there. So, yeah, so right. my, my appeal to, to you uh, viewers is, Come over to our paradigm, and I, I thank you for your support and your vote. And thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>